Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Talkie Stakes Minecraft. We've officially finished the prologue, can have some basic supplies now. And so we are now currently searching for a home. And I believe I found us a perfect spot. As you can see, I've already been um, tearing away at it a little bit. And I'm going to continue to tear away at it. Just thought it'd be good to give you guys a little update before we really got started with the episode. So you see this now. I've already cleared away a good deal of forest. Probably about mm, seven, nine trees, something like that. Uh, next time you see this, most of this area should be cleared. I like the green of this grass and it just really was a flat landscape, has a lot of space to work, so this is where our first base shall be. So I'll be right back. Alright guys, so I've been clearing out this forest a little bit. I believe I have a good deal of space. That little spot over there, we're about to be doing something, so um, yeah. And let me clear out some more of my inventory. I thought I had it all cleared out, but I must have actually picked up some saplings. So. Today, we are going to be heading down to make a hostile mob spotter. And it's going to automatically kill the mobs. And I may even give it options so that I can do other things. Like if I don't want them to die for some reason, I could stop them from. Or maybe turn them into where I could use them as XP spawner. And um, I, they'd be down to one hit under a certain flip of a switch. But for now, we're just going to build the actual spawner. That's what today's episode is going to focus on. And this is going to be the center of my home. Um, the mob spawner will be the center fold of my home, and it'll be what everything else is based around. So this TNT was just made to market because I happen to be able to make four TNT. And, oh, yes, 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 before I forget, let's, let's look over here. In case you didn't see it last time, I would have my chest. Yes, I knew the diamonds were there last episode. I just wanted to troll you guys. So, yeah, don't, don't, don't fret about that anymore. I did get the diamonds. They're safe and secure. And um, I'm not going to turn them into anything yet, though, because I want a diamond pickaxe. So I'm just going to wait until I get one more diamond. All right, so let's dig down. And we want to be 24 blocks down from the surface. So the surface is going to be at 71. So that means 67, 47. That's where we're going to want to go is about 47. But I'm going to give it um, a couple of grace points, I guess you could say. That's, that's That didn't make much sense. I'm going to um, put it a little bit higher than that just to give me a little bit more free room to work around. So um, let's say let's just put it at 49. I think 49 will be a good spot for it. So um, And the reason we're putting it this close is because uh, the idle timer. And the idle timer, in case you guys don't know, it was added, man, I think it was added in when the official release came out, maybe? I think so. I may be wrong on that. If I am, someone in the comments will correct me. But in any case, idle timer, if the mobs are further than 36 blocks from you, I believe, and that's, um, that's vertically and horizontally moving blocks. The blocks don't move um, diagonally when you're counting blocks. Like, for example, this would be one block right here, two blocks, three blocks. You couldn't go one, two. So... 24 blocks, so that's 24 blocks up, 24 blocks horizontally. Um, in between 24 and 36 blocks, mobs will spawn and move around. But if they're further than 36 blocks from you, after a few seconds, they'll have something turned on called an idle timer, in which they will sit still until you get into range where they would track you. Hey, Mr. Creeper. How you doing there, fella? Oh, man, I kind of just want to waste a TNT just for, just for the sake of getting this guy in a very epic manner. Nah. Come here. Alright, dealt with him. Now just to deal with the creeper. Dealt with him. And now there's a skeleton, of course. And I'm going to get better about my lighting, as I promised you guys. I'm going to be sure to light everything up. Um, with the hostile mob spawner. I'm going to have to do a lot of caving because it's going to be very slow efficiency at first because the mobs will have a lot of other places where they can spawn. But as I light up caves, as I'm doing with this one right now, as I light up caves, the mobs will um, have less and less spaces to spawn, will be forced to spawn in my spawner, which will give me higher rates and um, better efficiency um, mob farm. And yes, I plan on making it to where it can be a variable XP farm. 
and I'll show you guys how I'm going to do that as we get close to that time. That will probably be saved for another episode. Um, for now, I have absolutely no reason to be in this cave. I'm going to collect a little bit of iron, and then we're going to get back on track. So let me collect this iron, then I'm going to start digging down, and when I'm digging down, I'll be back with you guys. Alright guys, I got to thinking about it, and I decided that um, I am, in fact, going to put the mob spawner 24 blocks down, instead of 22, like I'd originally planned. And let me go ahead and explain to you guys a little bit more about how these things work, as I begin to build it. Um, these mob spawners, how they work is I build pads, and the pads are going to hold mobs, of course, and the mobs are going to be centered down into a stream of water. And then this water will, um, once they fall into it, it will pull them up to the surface using the fact that mobs always try to swim when they're in water. Once at the surface, they will be killed. And I'm going to have a variable to make it into either an XP farm or to where it just automatically kills them. So the pads themselves, um, if I remember correctly from my original schematic, are going to be 6 by 6 by 6. Just a, um, not, not 6 by 6 by 6, excuse me. 6 by 6 by 2. And they're going to have a 2 high spawning area. These pads will be for spawning the monsters. And then, once they fall down into the current below, they'll be forced to travel down a water path that leads straight to the middle of the, um, the, middle of the room. The water pads will carry them to the middle of the room, then there will be a water stream that carries them upward towards the surface. And so when they r hit the surface, they will, um, they will then be immediately killed by moi, either through an XP farm or a just automatic killer, and their drops will come straight to me. So that's, that's the plan of it. And the 6x6x2 six by six by pads. So what we're going to do is I need a two space for water current so spiders can fit in. And let me cover this up so no mobs come falling in on top of my head. That will not be good. Okay. Let me light this up. I know you guys can't see. I'll fix that. Okay. So this, what I'm building right now, is going to be the water canals. Right here is going to be right where the mob evader is. So we're going to put four torches right there. Just so that, um, just so you guys can see that this will be, uh, the mob evader or elevator for the mobs. And that's going to be the thing that uses them swimming to bring them upward towards the surface. These are going to be my water canals that bring them to the four-way mob evader. So we're going to build it. Since the pa pads are going to be six by six, we're going to go over one, two, three, four, five, six from the surface, or er, from the uh, middle. And then there's going to be a two-wide path of water right here. So let's go ahead and do this. So I notice that these are supposed to be where the next pads of water go. And then they're going to be there is going to be another six by six pad and it is going to be right here so one two three four five and six let me light this up for you guys all right one two three four five six so that's a six by six and that's two uh, there's one right here, and it's six long, and then there's another one right here. So there will be two pads, and then back here will be another water canal. So let's go ahead and build this water canal. And this will just be so that the, um, the pad is completely surrounded by water, so if the mob falls off on any side, it will be forced onto the stream. So let's go ahead and build this way as well, just build a little indention. Alright. Now that we have a bit of an indention, you can kind of see how this side will look. This is not going to be the end of it. There will be, um, there will be s two more 6x6 six six pads that direction, and two more 6x6 six six pads that direction. And then over on this side will be an exact replica of what this side will look like. Um, that may have been a bit confusing. In fact, let me um, c turn you guys off for just a second, and I will be right back. Do you hear that? a slime. Hmm. I mean, slimes can spawn somewhere around here. I'm going to be watching out for that. Alright, sorry about that, guys. I could just feel your confusion through my computer screen, and I knew that I was going to be getting a lot of hate if I didn't start explaining myself. And um, I really want to be a good teacher for you guys, so 
I just decided to cut it there while, while I was still ahead of the game and to come back with you after I had enough done to where I could give you a general idea of what was going on. Alright, so how um, this hostile mob spawner slash system works is there are pads like these. This is an entire corner of pads. That's going to be the four-way mob evader that um, lets the mobs travel upward to the surface to their um, certain demise. It's a good way of putting it. And um, this is where they spawn. So they will spawn on top of these pads once it's dark in here. It's just lit up right now while I work. They will be on these pads, and then they will fall off. They'll just walk off as they're derping around. They'll be derp, 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 I'm a creeper. And then they'll fall into here. Now down here, as you can see, there's no way to get back up for them. Except I think I made it my own way up. Yeah, that won't be that. And when they fall down and land on the ground here, there will be water currents. I will have um, water currents all traveling throughout the uh, entire system. And the water currents will all lead them back to the center area, where there will then be water, a uh, water current that carries them upward using the fact that mobs always try to swim when they're in water. They always try to go upward. And so there will be just a mass of water up here that carries them to the surface. So they'll spawn on these pads, and they'll be brought to the middle here, and then they'll be carried upward. And this is an entire corner done with the pads. Now i just got to add the water currents to this corner, but I'm not going to do that until I've finished the whole project. So this is one quarter of it. Um, that means in total at the end of it, four times four, there will be 16 pads, and six times six, there are, each one will have a 36 time spawning uh, space. Uh, 36 spawning spaces is what I mean to say, because um, each one of these spaces will be an area in which a mob can spawn. So 16 times 36, hold on, let me pull out my calculator really quickly, and we'll figure out how much spawning space this m particular mob system will have. And this is not the only way of doing this, and I'm sure I'm not the first person to come up with this, but um, I, I know I'm, in fact, I know I'm not the first person to come up with the four-way mob vader. Um, I saw that on an Ethos Lab video, and um, his spawners might have actually looked a lot like these. So, yeah. But, um, hold on, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find a, my calculator on my phone. Where is that thing? Hmm. Ah, I should have been prepared. Screw it. No calculator. If you want to do the math, you can. 16 times 36. That's how many spawning spaces will be down in here. And believe it or not, even with all that spawning space, the mobs will still not frequent this area at first. Because there's still, in comparison, so much more cave than there is of this spawning space that is unlit. So as I light up caves, this thing will slowly become more efficient until finally it'll just be uber crazy awesomeness with mobs. Um, as long as I'm close to it, the idle timer has guaranteed that if you get, I get far away from this, it will not run at all. But um, the main reason I'm doing this, to be perfectly honest with you guys, is to, um, to gain resources. I mean, this is just a beautiful way to gain resources, which makes it a great beginning prog pro project, even if it will not run very quickly in the beginning. So I'm just building more water canals right in here. And um, these will form into new pads, these areas up here that are just filled in with space. So um, I'll continue to work on that. And I'm going to cut you guys off here in a second so you don't have to watch all the grunt work. But before I do, I just want to mention to you guys that um, on this channel, I'm not only going to be doing this LP. At first, I'm just going to kind of start out with it, but uh, eventually I'm going to be doing several different things at once, most of them to do with Minecraft, and um, a couple of other spare help LPs of just completely different games here and there. But um, one of the major things I want to go ahead and inform you guys on is I run a private server, um, a whitelisted server, and it's called the Force Survival Server, and it got its name because it was originally began by four people, um, of course me being one of them, and three of my buddies. We actually have grown a little bit, but still are around the, around the same um, amount of people. And it's just been running for a few weeks now. It hasn't been going for too long. And um, I'll probably be posting several videos of myself on the Force Survival server later on. But for now, um, we're going to continue to do this Let's Play. And probably a couple of things with the guys from the Force Survival server, like a couple of mini games. Like, um, I watch the Minecraft people from time to time, and they're probably actually my favorite YouTubers. And 
the Minecraft, uh, if you guys know who I'm talking about, they play Minecraft as well. They do their own Let's Plays on it and have their own server. And they did a series called Ultra Hardcore. And Ultra Hardcore, if you guys are not already aware of this, you need to check it out, by the way. It is really, really, really exciting. It's like hardcore mode for servers. But there's a reason it's called Ultra Hardcore. is because your health does not regenerate automatically. Even when your food bar is full, your health is still not regening. The only way to regenerate health is to either drink health potions or eat golden apples, both of which have modified recipes to make them harder to uh, obtain. Um, like the to make a glistering melon, you need a golden block instead of a golden ingot. Or wait, it's a golden nugget actually. My bad. And you need eight golden ingots instead of eight golden nuggets for to make the golden apple. So it's very hard to recover health, and it's just basically a last man standing game type. You attempt to, to gnaw away at each other and kill each other until there's only one standing, and then he becomes the winner. Um, and just while we had that short conversation, we've nearly almost finished two more paths. So, I mean, as you can see, this this can be done fairly quickly. Um, it shouldn't take me too much longer. Actually, are these are these pads too long? Did I do that wrong? Let's count how long they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, they're a little bit too long. You can shave off this end. And after I complete these two paths, I'm going to let you guys be skipped on ahead and work on this a little bit more. But um, before before that happens, uh, let me go ahead and explain to you guys that um, this will be the center of my base, as I've already said. And my base is going to be um, a storage room. And the storage room is going to use my compact smart bank idea that I told you guys from the prologue. So that tutorial will be coming up soon. And you'll see the tutorial on how I built it before you actually see it in my LP, though. So that, that should be coming up actually very shortly. And, yeah, I'll be right back. All right, guys. So I was digging around down there, um, working on building the mob spawner. When I ran into something, turns out this is the, this was very, very, very close to the cave that we were in yesterday, and I actually happened to run directly into the thing. So um, that's good. This is some area that we already have lit up. I don't think I lit up this cave perfectly though, so I'm gonna have to come back through here later and finish up that job. Anyway, I'm gonna come back down here, and just since we're recording, might as well give you guys a quick update on where we're at. So let's break this. Let's use a shovel. And let me cover this up. Okay. This is a uh, update of where we're at. Just finished the f uh, third quarter of the mob spawners themselves, like the pads. Th have not done any of the water crunch yet. Not going to do that until I've completely finished the mob spawner. But we're getting really close. I can just taste it. I can taste the end of these pads. And I, I can see it. I can see it in the near future. Lots and lots of mobs coming to a very, very bloody, nasty demise and giving me all their gunpowder. Yes. Yes. And as for the skeletons, they'll be really helpful dropping those bones and those arrows. Arrows, of course. Duh. For bows, obviously. And as for the uh, bones, I mean, that'll be useful for bone mill, which is just growing absolutely anything plant-related. So that will be very nice. Um, it will give me a boost on a wheat farm, if that's my next project I choose to do. And um, we also got to build a slime farm sometime soon, because with, um, with this current project I'm working on, I'm going to need some sticky pistons. And, of course, to make sticky pistons, I'm going to need some slime so that I can do my fancy pantsy redstone magic and give this thing a few variable options so that it's not just mobs running up there to their demise every time and I could make it all those other things I said like an XP farm or whatnot. So um yeah definitely need to build that in the near future. Be looking forward to that. Some slime farm building. And when we get done building the carcass for this today, I'm actually probably going to go harvest um some sand. So that we'll have that material for building, which uh, believe it or not, is coming very, very soon. We will be building our base and um, our storage room with, you know, our compact smart bank. All very, very soon. 
Um, I'm really liking the way it's turning out. It seems like we're moving at a good pace so far. And I hope we continue this pace. I really don't want to leave any projects unfinished, though. So um, today we are going to be working to make sure that um, this... I'm sorry, I was counting and trying to think. I kind of lost track of my train of thought. But I have it back now. I have it back. Uh, we have to get these pads done today. And tomorrow's episode, I'll have to do the um, water, though. Like the... Um, Piping? That's not that's not the right word. The currents in the ditches that carried them to the four-way mob evader. There we go, that's good enough. So that um so that we can get that done. But I don't want to do that today just because I think I would bore the crap out of you guys if this is what I did the entire episode. I mean it's not it's not exciting enough in my opinion to make an to make an entire um an entire episode of. So, for you, those of you guys who don't know how to do a sand quarry, and no, I don't just mean like just breaking the sand blocks with the shovel. I mean like, you know, using torches and whatnot. I'm probably going to be doing a little bit of that um, up here in a second. And I might go ahead and get a general shape of what our storage room is going to look like before the end of the episode. But that's just going to be dependent on how much time we have left. I've not looked at the amount of time we have left in a while, actually. Um, in fact, here, I'm going to take a break. And while I'm taking this break uh, video, I'm going to check and see how much video we have recorded so far so that I can decide um, how much more video we have left to do because I want it to equal out to be about 30 minutes. So the more we can fit into that, the merrier. And I'm going to go ahead and finish up the shell for this mob spawner, get all the pads worked out. And um, then I'll be right back. See you guys. All right. So... It's not much of a sight for sore eyes. In fact, it is just plain ugly. But that's okay. I really will never be down here to see it. So it really doesn't matter that it's not that pretty. Um, I'll be up at the surface. Mobs come to me. I'm not going to have to come down here after them. So it's it's very useful. So that it's use way since outweighs its look since, you know, I'll never be seeing it. And on top of being useful, look what else it did for us. Look at all these materials. All of these materials were gained from this one little adventure we had down here. So, I mean, it was definitely worth our time. We're not going to have to be digging for cobble anytime soon. And um, we have a little bit of iron that we gained from it, but not really um, enough to where we don't have to go caving. And we're going to have to go caving anyway just to light them up so that we can make this thing run faster. But, um, yeah, I'm done down here for right now. Uh, tomorrow's episode, we will be coming down here and filling in the water currents, make them all lead right here to the middle, carry them up, and set all that up. And then later, when we have more slime balls and um, pistons, so, you know, sticky pistons, and redstone and whatnot, we will start adding variables to it, like to make it an XP farm or to shut down certain mob drops and maybe even shut down spider spawning or be able to turn it on. All that kind of fancy stuff, but for now it's just going to be a basic mob spawner and it should be up and running by either tomorrow's episode or the episode after that. Um, I got to carry all these supplies up to the surface though and after I do that, I will meet you guys there. All right, so I have all the supplies put up, and now I was thinking we go and head for a sand quarry. I want one kind of far away from the base, so that we don't um, run into any issues with like having to pass by it frequently. Because I'm just going to mess it up. Like I am just going to take every last piece of sand from that place. Um. And I actually think I'm going to have to do that off camera because we're about out of time for today. So, um, I appreciate you guys liking, or not liking, for watching the videos. Please remember to like if you like the video, and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Um, I would really like for, to, for you guys to tell me what you think of the uh, mob spawner. Would you like to see more of that? Like to see less? Like to never hear of it again? That's completely up to you guys. Um, you know, I'm doing this completely for you. So, you're the boss. Tell me, tell me what you guys like to see more of, like to see less of. Did you enjoy caving in the prologue? Did you enjoy the mob spawner, watching it be built? Do you think you'll enjoy it more once it's finished? Um, it, please leave a comment. Tell me about it. Tell, give me some suggestions for what you'd like our base to look like. And till next time, this has been Talkie Steak. And I am currently about to go to sleep going to compress the video, compress the audio, and hit the hay. So, until tomorrow morning, 
when you guys are watching the video, commenting, doing what you do. My name is Talkie Steak, and goodbye.